Hey guys, and welcome to a, another LNT here in beautiful Japan. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. For uh, this Learn Teach, um, it's going to be based off a video I uh, heard from Rock Thomas talking about lack of conviction. And that's what I learned about this week. And it was interesting to me because he drew that lack of conviction to how successful people are within their business. And um, people who have a lack of conviction in that they don't necessarily believe in the product that they're selling or they're doing it for the wrong reasons, you can often tell those types of people when you're talking with them, right? And I think that people have those kind of thoughts because they have limiting beliefs about, um, you know, oh, I'm not smart enough to do this. Oh, you know, I can never be that successful, you know, comparing themselves to the salespeople who have millions of dollars in sales or millions of units sold or whatever that is. And... Um, you can tell in those people that they don't, they, you can't sell what you don't believe in, right? And you can tell when people have truly passion about something, like they were get really energetic, you can just feel the energy that they have and, and they truly believe about what they're trying to tell you and what they're trying to sell you versus the people who are just selling you things because they're trying to make a quota, right? And, and those people can be, you know, very conniving. And you can tell with a lot of those types of people who they are. <clears throat> and, and then you've got people who just, you know, are, are fearful about the, the rejection and what could happen if they actually put themselves out there and, and tried to talk to people instead of, of um, you know, just going for it and letting it happen. And it's that fear of rejection, I think, that really keeps a lot of people from being true salesmen and, and, and following their passions. And, um, and I think it stems kind of from a couple different things. One, either when you're talking with people, it's either the wrong time or it's the wrong audience. You know, um, so for example, you're trying to talk to someone about, about real estate investing and, you, and your ultimate goal is to get them to invest, you know, $10,000 in your apartment building or whatever. And so you're talking to them, it's like, hey, you know, this is a great deal, blah, 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 blah. You know, if you'd be interested, it's going to be, you know, $50,000. And it's like, okay, I don't have the money. Okay, well, if you'd be, you know, it's, it's so great, you're going to make 20% return and, you know, you'll have your money back in three years. Like, okay, I don't have the money. Oh yeah, that's just okay, but you know, you can use your retirement fund, you can use this, you can ask for people. It's like, no, I don't have the money. And so you're pinging people who who are the wrong audience, right? They're not the right person to talk to about this. <clears throat> and and so instead of trying to continuously ping that person, go to someone who is act to be receptive, who would, who would actually be receptive to your message. Go to someone who would who it, would, it is the right time to talk to. And uh, I think it's it comes to it's trying to shift your mentality from trying to convince people to do whatever you're trying to sell them or buy whatever product or get on any program and try to qualify them. Qualify them with questions because at the end of the day, you're just wasting each other's time if neither of you are truly on the same page about what you're trying to sell and that person is trying to buy from you. So, so to qualify them with questions like, okay, you know, what are your ultimate goals in terms of real estate? You know, what do you want to get out of your money? How much money do you have? You know, what is your family situation like? And that will see if it's a total waste of your time to continue talking with that person. And at the same time, not just wasting your time, but wasting their time as well. So that's what I learned about this week. And in terms of my teach this week, we're going to talk about lowering operating expenses and, and uh, you know, talking about uh, increasing your NOI week. The theme of that, uh, here are a few things that you can do to lower your operating expenses. Uh, one, you can do a yearly review of all of your contracts that you have uh, in terms of your property manager, um, in terms of insurance, um, uh, your internet phone services, accounting, contract services, all that. Do an annual review and see if you can find a better and cheaper option. You may surprise yourself how often that comes up, um, especially if it is a kind of a new company that's offering trash or property manager or whatever. Um, you may be able to get a good price on that, right? And you may be able to find a better company. Uh, you can also appeal your tax appraisal. And, and uh, often, you know, people just kind of let their... Uh, whatever evaluation they have stand and to just pay the tax as well I mean it doesn't have to be like that you can talk to your county tax assessor um, to figure out if, if you can appeal for a, a cheaper a cheaper tax rate um, and there are companies that will do that for you you can also lower utility costs and one of the best ways to do it is, to lower your operating expenses is to lower your utility costs if, if you are paying for them yourself things like installing glow flow showers and toilets um, energy efficient appliances and, and lighting um, doing quarterly inspections of your HVAC systems, things of that can lower your cost. Uh, minimize your turnover costs and by putting in uh, carpet, or sorry, putting in a hot, uh, vinyl instead of carpet. 
um, talking to your tenants beforehand and trying to get an idea of, of when they want to turn over and see if they're just fine with, with just renewing it at a higher lease rate. Um, and so you can also lower your payroll costs if you have in-house leasing or, uh, or uh, property management that is in-house. So those are a number of different ways that you can lower expenses. And if you check out Friday's podcast, you'll hear about a great way to increase your NOI that we actually just enacted at our most recent property marina points that we're potentially going to be making, increasing your NOI by $20,000 in one year with no money out of pocket just by simply negotiating a contract. So tune in for that on Friday. Hope you guys have a great LNT day and I'll catch you next week.